landed, Mr. Ben Folds. We've landed on XM <laughs> 9. <laughs> Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, and little Carl Pilkington, and his magical little manky round baldy head. He was described as a um, wacky mank in uh, one of the papers this week. Really? Brilliant. Well, remember we were talking about it last week about he came round to my house and uh, I popped out my uh, um, Mr. Johnson. Sure. To take a little look at. And he's two That made daughters. the papers. That right. made the papers. Wow. What ma what paper? It wasn't it wasn't front page of the Times. It must have been like the Daily Star <laughs> or something. <laughs> Just squeeze live eight. Yeah, yeah, second, yeah, yeah. On the second page. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, wacky mank. Wacky mank. That's wacky great. Wacky mank. Wacky mank. We had an email from someone who reckons they remember you from uh, body popping uh, round Salford Way. Yeah, Eccles Precinct apparently. You like, know that there? I, was, I wasn't doing it round there though. What was it? I was round Stratford. Stratford Arndale. And what were you doing? What sort of body popping was it? Just a bit of everything. Caterpillar. <laughs> uh, bit of moonwalking. Do you have a little piece of liner you used to carry around? Well, mates had that. Right, you did Spoiled bears. Spoiled bears. Were you really good? Uh, but you weren't break dancing, well, you weren't spinning on your head and stuff, you were more body popping. Well, I hope you weren't spinning on his head, cause you know that can sort of do- you can give you sort of brain damage and things. Well, it can give you brain damage, also it can wear your, um, head down, and also it makes your head perfectly round. Yes. Because gravity is pulling but on But if all. you keep on doing it, obviously it's gonna wear your hair- Hair out, yeah, so you, so you become a, um, sort of like a- Stupid. Uh, stupid, bald. And roundy yeah. headed. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, very I very much doubt that you did do any of that, no. did you, Carl? Didn't do any of that. Uh, well. Wow. So you're shooting off in a minute, aren't you? Well, yes, because we were trying to make poverty history, Carl. Yeah. It's People weird. are making poverty history all over the place. They're putting on a wristband. Oh, so and it seems to be working. Because I haven't been poor for ages. <laughs> I haven't been poor. Uh, and, the, and Alex had a, um, a stop bullying. Alex was wearing a stop bullying uh, wristband, and as he himself said, he, he he seems to have sorted that out. You haven't been bullied, I haven't been bullied for years. So wristbands, wristbands work. I so saw one um, in a shop window the other day, which said, um, "Stop child abuse," and I bought one, obviously, because um, a lot of people say, you know, does it make a difference? But it was only a quid, and I'd only spent it on kiddie porn. <laughs> So, you know, I think I've made a little difference there, <laughs> in a small way. On a serious note, though, I like the idea that, that, stop child of this, you're a paedophile and you're walking along the street in your Mac, right, you've got a puppy in one hand, a bag of sweets in the other, and you see this wristband and you go, oh, stop it. Oh, okay then. Yeah, I All right. thought before, that's All what right I think. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. Well, I won't be doing that again. Yeah, he was hanging around in Top Shop <laughs> for unsavory reasons. <laughs> he saw them in there for only a quid. Carl, we haven't got long, have we? We've got an hour and a half because we've got to shoot off. I've got to shoot off down to Live 8 and then um, uh, introduce Rem. Um, so uh, we've got a lot to pack in. We've got the Rockbusters and then we give away. I just saw those. Um, I'll finish the sentence in a minute. I look forward to it. I'm getting excited. Yeah. I'm getting excited. So we've got so much to pack in. Yeah. I haven't got time to finish all my. So listen, <laughs> right? Do you know the things we're giving away? The signed little Homer. Um, the Nigel Tufnell thing and the Flanimals, right? It looks brilliant. They've done a brilliant job, the people here at XFM. So take back all you were saying about them, Carl. <laughs> and also we should say as well, you've still got a chance to win that because if you get today's Rockbusters, you go straight into the hat yeah. for the big draw, so you've still got a chance to win all those top prizes. Uh, Play a record. Bit of monkeys. Uh, yeah. Monkeys. Pleasant Valley Sunday. Alright, so that, Carl? It's alright, yeah. What's it about? <laughs> well, if you heard, it was a sort of, uh, description of, you know, typical suburbia, isn't it? Here in status symbol land. You know, it's a sly dig. The monk- when the monkeys get a bee in their bonnet about something- Oh. You better not- You, you do not want to be on the receiving <laughs> end of that. <laughs> yeah. We've uh, got, we got a, uh, good song with a story later. Go on, what have we got? Up. Uh, don't want to tell you yet. Alright. Now, is it as, um, pitiful as last week's, where you somehow- Misheard um, that Eric Clapton song. What was the Eric Clapton song? Well, it, wonderful tonight, and yeah. he was convinced it was, it was about a bloke in a wheelchair for no reason, mm. no mm. evidence at all. Mm. Other than she's walking around with me. Yeah. Well, yeah, walking around with me. No, no. I, I walk mean, into a room and everyone's head turns yeah. to look at her, which she didn't seem to. Helps him to bed. Is he drunk? Mm. Is that a few? Oh, uh, never mind. Yeah, well, you're totally wrong. Big day Again. Carl though, isn't it? No, let's, cause he's, you know, there's lots going on, and I know Carl's very, it's very, very important for him that he, he champions live aid. I don't know what's going on. I, d I don't know what, I, I am sick of it, to be honest. <laughs> sick of what? Just sick of reading about it. Sick of this live aid thing. Sick of it all. Brilliant. Fed up with it. What, what annoys you particularly? It. It's not only that today though, is it? Um, on the way in today, right, saw a gay fella. <laughs> 
On a bike. Weird? On a bike, rushing. What time did the gay march start? What, what time did it have to be? Why are you looking at me? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he was, he was rushing, left it late, so he'd had a late night again. So my point's right about him. Well, right. what, was, what was your point about just to the people who just, uh, tuned in? Well, the fact that they, they go out late, so, you know, they, they sort of have a nice night out from about half past eleven. <laughs> <laughs> They're lining the jeans at like <laughs> half past ten. <laughs> their jeans? <laughs> they leather trousers. But anyway, right, so... They're cutting the back, aren't they? leather trousers <laughs> about <laughs> half ten at night. <laughs> I'm on the way in, right, and I see one stressed out, rushing, right, on a yeah. racer, yeah. wearing high heels. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love you. He's 50's dad, isn't <laughs> he? He's got, he's angry, he's just angry. If you're a gay fella and you're, um, you're proud to be gay, but you also want to make poverty history, you don't know what to do today, do you? You're all racing all over the place. Uh, must be murder. It seems a bit unfortunate that they've put them on the same day. Yeah. Well, you, you, can get, you can get little, um, little leather studded uh, wristbands that say make public history. Yeah. So, uh, you know, you can, you can, you can join in you on can, both parts. You part. can kill two birds at once, don't you? Yeah. yeah. But why mm. is live bait stressing you out? It's probably a good cause. You must have, um, you know, we, I know we've discussed this in the past and you don't really know what you're talking about, but... I mean, may maybe that's the problem. I'm just, uh, I don't know. I mean, I could, I could have told them ages ago that there was no way that they were gonna pay it back. <laughs> I knew that was gonna happen. I love that. But they didn't consult you, did they? When they were handing out this money willy-nilly to people who were dying, you could have had a quiet oh, word yeah. with them. You all, could have, all I'm saying is- You right, could have said to Harold Wilson, Harold, don't, they're not, you're not gonna get this back, mate. Obvious. You are not gonna get this Obvious. back, mate. When I wanted a mortgage, I had to supply three wage slips, is what I'm saying. <laughs> I was double checked out loads of times. <laughs> Well, I'd then. like to see, um, have you ever seen that guy Alvin Hall who gives financial advice to perhaps teenagers who don't know how to spend their money wisely? Mm. All right. Perhaps, like, send him over there. He's the guy with the, the bow tie. Oh, yeah, you know yeah. What I mean? yeah. Like, send him over there and just sort of have a chat with him and say, yeah. Uh, you know, make, a, make a list of what you're so, sending it on. So, he's basically, are you, are you, will you be annoyed if they drop all debt and double aid and everything? No, no, because, I mean, you know, people sometimes need help and that, don't they? You've got to help people out, but yeah. it's, it's, it's how many times is the thing. You know what I mean? Let them off. But, but do I, uh, you know, I, I've got this, uh, monthly payment at the moment, haven't I? Yeah. I'm paying for tools for people out there who need right. a drill to build a house or whatever. Yeah. Am I now in my right to say, well, you can't have it all. Yeah. Do you want the drill or do you want the debt cancelled? <laughs> this is what I'm saying. Okay. I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm all happy to help people out. Do you think, do you think they're taking us for a month? Is that what you think you might well, be taking? We'll, we'll see, won't we? Time will tell, won't we? You know what I mean? If, if next year at the same time, Geldof's putting on another gig. I'll go, what's going on now? <laughs> <laughs> Geldof putting on another gig of the Mean Fiddler. What's going on now? I but think you're missing out on the true meaning of today, Carl, which is an opportunity to see Keen for free. <laughs> I think that's the problem. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to go. I don't no. like crowds and that, do I? Right. I'm dealing with that. I don't like big crowds. People, because I was talking to people at work about it and they were saying, oh, you know, it's a big occasion, it's one of them events, like, you've got to be down there because in years to come, when they say, you know, we are there, I don't see what's good about having a memory being stuck in a crowd of 150,000 people. I prefer to uh, do something nice, say, if I, if I have, like, a nice cake and a cup of tea, right? <laughs> in years to come, when, when they go, do you remember that day when we were all cramped and what have you? I'll go, no, I was on a nice cake and a cup of tea. <laughs> so I've got a nice, nicer memory than them. <laughs> uh, so I believe in doing something nice on a big occasion, do you know what I mean, on a special day. Do yeah. something nice, remember that. The thing is, you have got a nicer memory than them because when you look back and they say what you're doing twenty years ago, your memory will tell you you were actually having a, um, cup of tea and a cake but with a chimpanzee that could talk English. That's what your memory will tell you. <laughs> you know, you're like, oh, I was out, I was out with my mate, I was out with my mate, Marty, he's a chimp. And it just, you're, you'll be in cuckoo land by the time you're fifty. You'll be just going, that was great that day, I remember, Suzanne? Suzanne, I don't know what I'm talking to Suzanne, she's left you. She's left you, she's had enough of you waking well, up. Well, she's going. down in High Park watching Bed Shaped live. <laughs> <laughs> she's not worried about cake and a cup of tea. <laughs> have you ever done a march or anything though? Have you ever sort of- What are you saying? Have you ever, have you, you know, you're having a go at me for not getting behind it all, right? Which I am because I'm, I've got more standing orders going out of my account for charities than anything, yeah. right? But are you, have you ever got behind a, 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 you know, a problem? No. I don't think I have to be fair, no, no. No, I am quite slack in that respect. It right. does take a lot of effort though, doesn't it? Well, it depends. What sort? Well, yeah, you know, if you're gonna do one of those walks from John O'Groats to Land's End or something, that's a lot of time commitment. There's one, I tell you what, there is one that's, that looks alright. 
on, um, Portland Place, just off Oxford Street, there's always, uh, just a little Chinese fella sat on the pavement. Right. Oh, I've seen him, yeah. What's that all about? Yeah. He's just sat there with a poster, but you don't know what it's for because it's in Chinese. Yeah. So he's just, he's just always sat there. But that's a nice, that's, for me, that's the sort of march I want where you just, and he's only there when it's sunny. If it's raining, they don't bother. I tell a lie, I did pop down when all those women walked through London in their bras. <laughs> <laughs> And gravity on XFM 104.9. We've uh, had a couple of texts. People obviously can text in 83 XFM. That's the um, text number for the uh, big quiz that's coming up shortly. Rockbuster, still your opportunity to win some of those cracking prizes. Enter your name in the draw if you can um, unravel the, I don't know what you call them, conundrums that uh, yeah, Carl set. Sort of. We've had a couple of texts. Um, obviously, we're leaving early today. This is a, sh a shortened show and our last show of this run. But we've got to leave early. We've got to go down and try and make poverty history. Um, but Rob's texted and he says, only an hour and a half today. Well, poverty does have some benefits then. <laughs> uh, He's a fan. He understands the show. Who was that little fella that used to, uh, write in who hated the I show? Know, I forget his name, eh? And I haven't heard from him from a while, for a while, actually. I don't know what happened. No. Maybe you realised that if you hate the show so much, the obvious thing to do was to switch off. Maybe that finally That's annoying. Him. What's his name? Someone will remind us of his I name. I like people who hate us to carry on listening. Yeah. It just gives it an edge, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, It's the fact that, you know, some, that you're annoying someone. I mean, I love annoying people. I know you do, I know. So you're, you're like a kind of walking Chinese water torture. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, have we got Ladder 49 today? Rick, there's a number of cracking DVDs as ever on Rockbusters. Um, we've got The Life Aquatic mm. with Bill Murray. We've got Howard and uh, Kumar Get the Munchies, <laughs> hilarious stoner comedy, and uh, Batman the Animated Series. And Ladder 49, there it oh, is. Oh, Phoenix, yes. John Travolta. If you, incidentally, if you've ever seen Ladder 49, then you can give us a quick text review on uh, 83XFM. I'd be interested to know if, it, if it's Why actually worth watching. Why are you giving away one a week <laughs> for the last six weeks? Yes. Yeah. Well, we better start then. Let's do Rockbusters. For the last time, you can win those amazing prizes. All right. Um, as always, just a little cryptic clue. Some initials of a band or an artist. Work it out, email in or text in. That's it, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. Right, the first one. Uh, Richard Kit, uh, Richard's kid. Yeah. Cuts hair for a living. Right? Richard's kid cuts hair for a living. Right? Initials BD. Right? BD. Richard's, uh, Richard's kid cuts hair for a living. Second one. I have a problem saying the French word for well. Right? I think, I think that's, that's the right word anyway. Well. I have a problem saying the French word for well. So what's that? that initial there is K. Right, band or artist. And then uh, the third one. You take eight kebabs, two kebabs, fifty-seven kebabs, times it by twenty-seven kebabs. Right, the fella is struggling to work it out. What's 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 that? What's going on there? Right. It's <laughs> a good question. D S, D S is the answer there. Eight kebabs, two kebabs. I've got it. Fifty-seven kebabs times it. By 27 or what have you. Fellas struggling working it out. What yeah, is I've it? I've got that one. DS. So, uh, just email in ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk or on the text 83936. Yeah, and you can win uh, Ladder 49 and those other DVDs. Plus, you go into the draw, which we'll do before we leave, and you can win the uh, signed by Matt Groening, personally drawn uh, Homer Simpson. We've got the Spinal Tap poster signed by uh, Christopher Guest, and uh, and also the the original um, artwork of us uh, as Flanimals. But they've all been framed. They've done a brilliant job. It really is. It really is a nice prize. I, I mean, almost too good to give away. A little bit annoying. Is it too late to take that back? Well, I was we... thinking we could sneak in a a copy. Yeah. It's a very bad photocopy, so it goes grey and, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, they're all originals, so, uh, g keep, get texting. Alright. Alright. R.E.M. Night Swimming. Beautiful song. Brilliant band. I've got to introduce them and I'm actually nervous. Yeah. I never get nervous. You never get nervous, do I you? I never get nervous and I get a little adrenaline rush. It just takes, what is it, 80% of the world's population to be <laughs> watching you <laughs> and then you get a little bit jittery. And I don't know what to wear. No. No, this is interesting actually. <laughs> I don't know. Um, no, 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 no. I, uh, I, for a moment though, I was thinking maybe Ricky's got to pop home first before he goes down. 
<laughs> to bring on the band. But if you are watching it or if you're there, obviously you're not there, if you were there you wouldn't be listening to this, but if you're watching it on TV, do check Ricky out because how would you describe that particular look? Ricky's wearing, uh, sweatpants. I assume they're sweatpants. They're not pajama bottoms, are they? They're, yeah, they're so sweatpants. They're sort of, And yeah. you've got just a white t-shirt, cheap and plain white t-shirt. Yeah. And it- basically Ricky is wearing- <laughs> it's like- He's made so little effort. The only the, he could have made the only reason he, the only way he could have made less effort was if he wasn't wearing any clothes. <laughs> and he was just wearing his underpants that he slept in. <laughs> but he's actually bothered to put on a t-shirt and a pair of sweatpants and some trainers. Yeah, well. I mean, what, Ro Jonathan Ross is going to probably be wearing a suit, one of his you know expensive suits, yeah. or whatever. And, yeah, but he won't be as comfortable as me. Well, true. <laughs> Did it not occur to you for a moment to maybe make slightly more of an effort? Perhaps put on a jacket. <laughs> a jacket it looks silly with tracksuit bombs. Well, again, you could have changed the tracks to your bottoms. I mean, yeah. they're a mainstay of the outfit, are they? It's like they're not changing for anything. <laughs> yeah. I've got very little things that I, I haven't got a drawstring or an elasticated waistband. No, sure. I don't really don't want to be bothering with buttons and zips and hooks. There's gonna come a point, isn't there, where you're just gonna wear, I don't know, smocks. <laughs> baby grow. Baby grow. Yeah. Baby grow with a flap. Yeah. That'd be great, yeah. wouldn't it? Those little mittens. <laughs> yeah, all these, yeah, great. And then an oven glove, so I'm just gonna step out of the oven, eat it, let it drop everywhere. Yeah. Right, and then just get out of the baby grow, put a new one on, a clean one on. Or those kind of, those kind of red <laughs> flannel things with the, 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 the which cowboys wear. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The kind of buttoned up. Yeah, they're, 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 they're old cowboys. Yeah. Ground by, he comes out with the shotgun. Exactly. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, the long johns. Well, um, yeah. how's it going with Rockbusters? Anyone got the answers? Dunno, um, actually one yet. guy is, uh, he t texted and he, uh, James in Deptford, he's, uh, offered some answers, and he says here, the guy that hated us, famously of course, we should have remembered, Dickie Anderson. Dickie Anderson? Richard Anderson, of course. Um, oh. I, don't know, I, I don't know if Dickie's still listening, if he is, obviously email in ricky.gervais at xfn.uk, cut uk, and, uh, tell us what you've been doing, what, how you've been keeping busy and stuff. Yeah. Nice to hear from him. Chris Campling hasn't called, has he, either? No, oh, Campling. The one that thinks that not only is this whole show scripted, imagine <laughs> that, <laughs> right? But that Carl is a character created by us. Yeah. He's actually an actor. Oh, if only Look at that. A that. shaved monkey we got. I tell you, you're gonna go along later to the Live 8 gig and you're probably gonna see some bands that can make an effort to entertain you, but oh, if you want entertainment, Rick, you know it. Go There's on. only one person to book. Go on. Me. If you, if you, you know, you're perhaps yeah. I'm gonna do, um, uh, because uh, I mean, I'm, I'm mean, obviously a top well, DJ I, I, on the radio, yeah. but where my, where I really come into my own is DJing in any kind of club in Well, you told me you do a DJing, uh, I didn't go to it, uh, DJing a, a party, and you said the place was rocking. The place was roaring. And I loved it. Uh, Carl just, just said he was there and they weren't. Well, that's nonsense, Carl, they because you know very well that when I was put, I put on a tune, they'd cheer. Yeah, but it, it was late on in the night, they would have done that whatever you put on. That's nonsense. No, they, they, they were happy and everything. I'm not saying they were having a good time. It was your party. It was it was all right, but they weren't going mental like you're you're sort of making up. They were definitely going mental. Nah, when I put on the proclaimers, they could not believe their luck. Yeah. <laughs> they they would have walked a thousand miles. <laughs> was it good though? Was he? Were they really? What were they doing? Were they dan They were dancing, were they? It's dancing and that, but they weren't sort of cheering, going you know more and all that at the end. What's about? Oh, Take well. on me came on. They, they, they big, yeah. big cheer went up. Oh, I don't I've, know to believe. I've been there, done it, Steve. I've I've been the DJ as well. I oh, it might be jealousy. It I might think be like professional a, jealousy there. Like a, yeah. I think it's because my fortunes are on the up and his are on the down. You know, we all know famously that he had people uh, making, making music. music didn't his happen. DJ outfit didn't happen. Did, didn't. I did enough. I just wanted to do enough to pay for the equipment, and I did. And that was that. But I don't like crowds, do I? <laughs> But you're safe, aren't you? You're behind the little thing with the yeah, flashing lights. Yeah, there's still a lot of people and that. Forced fun. Don't like that. Forced it's fun. It's not forced fun. They haven't got to dance if they don't want to dance. Yeah. Don't like it. What do you mean you're forcing to on the app anyway, DJ? Well, you? I tell you, I was uh, hired, well I say hired, I did it as a favour to a friend, uh, his wedding the other week. And I got there, I was thinking, yeah. Cause I, you know, everyone was, everyone had, had their little role to play, and then people were doing a good job. <laughs> I love you taking it seriously. And I did, I spent wedding. ages putting together some CDs, <laughs> special selection CDs. <laughs> I love that! Cause what I did was I, I burned them on iTunes. Did you turn up with your own headphones round your neck? Uh, own headphones, wearing a suit but headphones. A metal case. Didn't need it, just had them all in one small box. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, I thought this is good stuff. I got some classics here. Give me an example. Give me an example of the, like the, the, the first hour, the warm up hour. Rick, um, I've, I'm coming straight in with, uh, Frankie Valley, Oh What a Night. Brilliant track. I mean, when those beats start at the beginning, who's not getting on the dance floor? Dun, 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 Wait a minute, what's dun, this followed up? Dun, go on. It's the Jacksons. Well, I want you back. I want you back. Brilliant. It sounds good at the moment, Carl. Yeah. 
So um, I'm thinking, like, at least I'm gonna, I'm gonna roar this, but because you know they laid on a good spread, the ceremony was nice, food was nice. I'm thinking this is gonna be the, the piece de resistance. Yeah. Alarm bells started ringing. Why? When I realised there was a marquee outside. Of course, it's a balmy summer evening. I'm stuck inside oh. on the dance floor. Inside, I'm thinking I'm gonna be struggling here to get them in. <laughs> even with, even with flavours like this, I thought I'd struggle with it. <laughs> so I'm sat there in my suit. It's <laughs> there. I'm sat behind this little, I'm sat behind this little DJ console. <laughs> I got to all the big numbers. There's one or two people making some token effort, but frankly, most people are outside everywhere. Oh, no. I was livid. Of course, they couldn't hear it out there, so I was playing to an empty room, really, and I was furious. I was absolutely furious because oh, no. I mean, what is you know, you're wasting my time. <laughs> you're wasting now. I could have just stepped the CD on. They're wasting, <laughs> 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 wasting Frankie Valli's. Frankie Valli's time. They're wasting the Jackson Five. They're wasting you know, D-Light's time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, so I'm sat there and there's like, yeah, there's a couple of people making a cursory effort, mainly when they come to get a drink from the bar, they might have a no. little quick, you know, cup of tea. You shout, we don't want your no, or, or, or yeah. all of your no All of your no one at all. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, then there's even, there's a microphone set up because people have been doing speeches. This little girl gets on the mic, right? It's being funneled through the speaker system. So every time I put my headphones on- oh, I Miss can, Dynamite, was it? <laughs> it wasn't sadly Miss Dynamite, although <laughs> she decided to, uh, have a little go at MCing. She was screeching a little head How off. How old is she? Oh, I don't know, eight or nine. <laughs> at their most annoying. <laughs> when, when children are at their most annoying, because they got a bit of confidence there. They're a bit cocky, they're not shy anymore, they're a bit arrogant. Yeah. She's screeching her head off, so I'm playing, you know. <laughs> oh, she doesn't know. Look at your face! I'm playing into the groove, no one's getting to the group because she's, because she's going mental. She's just going, ah, what's this? What's this? I don't know what this is. Play something I know. Oh. I think mean, I'm going to play DJ Otsu or Crazy Frog. I'm not going to play what, what you. So she's just switching along, ruining it for everyone. And I say it when there's no one there. So me, she was ruining it for me. <laughs> I bet you were really I'm angry. I'm furious. But of course, as well, every time she switched, it went through my headphones. <laughs> so I, uh, so, of course, I'm here, and then this, her dad comes along, right? And I'm oh. thinking, alright, he's gonna, he's oh, seen what's I'm just imagining you in your suit, sweating, getting annoyed at someone Living. ruining your set that yeah. no one's listening to. So no one's to. listening to. <laughs> I think, her, oh, her dad's coming over, he's gonna put, put pay to this, he's realised that, you know, she's causing a disturbance. He comes over there, joins in! No. Sits her, sits her on the lap, on his lap, he's just saying, hey, she's having a whirl of a time, I'm thinking I'm furious. I'm thinking it's his responsibility to shut her up, he's yeah, not gonna do anything. I what agree. can I do? I can't step in. No. And I know very well that if I interfere, he's gonna say, oh, well, she's enjoying herself and no one's dancing anyway, and we'd have just got into a frat car. Yeah. I didn't want to start a fight. No. Cause so, um, I don't know, but he'd have knocked you out, wouldn't he? Someone would have got knocked out. <laughs> and I'm, you know, I'm not saying who it would have been, but, <laughs> you know, but there was, to bear in mind, Rick, there would have been two of them. <laughs> And, um, so I didn't want to get into a fight with him. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> anyway, so I'm playing, anyway, so my friend came along, he, he, he realised what was happening, and I didn't have the guts to, uh, to unplug the microphone, cos uh, they'd have, he'd have known, you see. Yeah. So I got my friend to do it when she had her back to him. <laughs> <laughs> so he pulled the plug out, she, the microphone went dead, she went, what's going on? I went, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I said, I don't know. She said, well, the microphone's I said, you must have broken it. <laughs> oh, I don't know, I don't know what's going on. Someone will probably make you pay for that. Oh, and, uh, anyway, at least we shut her up. <laughs> that is great! But, uh, <laughs> but it just went, it really went from bad to worse. And, and you know there's that thing when you panic, you start panicking, so you start, you're putting on a lot of flavours that you would have saved till the, the, the last hour. What are we talking, boom, boom, shake, shake, Exactly, boom. you're throwing them in early, Love Shack's yeah. coming on way too soon. Really? Oh, Love Shack before 11, <laughs> I, it's heresy, but I had to do it. <laughs> But anyway, in the end, the, uh, the, I made the bride go and get some people in. I thought, I said, look, it's your special night, <laughs> all right, and they're gonna enjoy this. I'll be honest, love, this is a washout, and it's up to you <laughs> exactly. to turn this wedding yeah. around, or I'm walking. I'm walking, and I tell you, they're gonna have a sour memory of this evening, yeah, unless you so bring some people in. Yeah, so go everyone in dancing. So, I, so she got them in at the end, and, and I'll tell you this, Carl. I mean, I don't know what you say, but they were loving it. They were absolutely loving it. A bloke came over and said, have you got Amarillo? I said, no, but I put on something even better, Delilah. I have never, I mean, wedding crowds always go for Delilah. Less, uh, a song, of course, about old man killing his wife. It always goes down very well, strangely, at weddings. <laughs> yes. They get into a sort of hokey cokey thing. They went yeah. berserk for it. And I was following it up with, I had the monkeys, I had all sorts going on. Brilliant. Of course, you know what happens. What? I'm going go great guns. People are absolutely loving it. They're rocking it. I throw in, um, uh, Oh, I, I had something cracking on at the end of, come on Eileen, of course, was on. People sure. were going berserk for it. Which is unfortunate because the bride's name was Eileen. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And um, then the bride pipes up, I'm throwing the uh, bouquet. So they all traipse off outside again. Oh. I was furious! Oh no. I, grabbed, I put the microphone back in, I said, what are you doing? <laughs> we got, you know, but they went out there and of course you can't get them back once they've done that, because all the women are running around, I got the, I got the, you know, thing, no. and then they got to wave everyone off, throw the confetti. They, ru they ruined your day. I was having a great time and they ruined it. She ruined your special day. She ruined my special night. Oh no. You know, what, would you, her head. what would you put on about now, Carl? What if I was DJ? Yeah. Probably about a world party. Go on, oh, Interesting. <laughs> Yeah.
put the message in the box, put the message in the car, drive the car around the world, and I, uh, I'm imagining that that message is make poverty history. Um, <laughs> that's World Party, put the yeah. message in the box. Yeah. Um, can I just say quickly while I think of it, um, we get a lot of emails from people, a lot of texts saying, can you say, you know, can you send a big shout out, mm. stuff like that. You know, I've just looked at one now, Scott and Julie in Australia are listening, they want a big shout out, big shout yeah. to them. But there's so many people that do it, and I'm obviously, just want to say, sorry we never get to your emails, we're very, very lazy, we never really get to look through them, um, but we obviously do appreciate you emailing in, texting in, stuff like that. Um, and also, can I send a big shout out to my grandparents, who I believe might be listening, on their new digital radio? They're pretty high tech. Yeah, they're yeah, in yeah. country. Yeah. They're are they, are they, are they the merchants of, uh, uh Bristol? The merchants, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Props Good. to them. Props to them, yeah. Um, Carl. yeah, no, uh, it's a slightly truncated show, isn't it, today, Carl? We've got I don't like it. Like I don't like change, and that's what's happened. I'm not you don't do you? You're like Rain Man. He yeah. really is like Rain Man. Uh, anything change? It, 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 it's got to get in a little routine. You can't. Uh, no, uh, I don't like to. I'm not like Suzanne's mum and dad and what have you. Where routine cannot change no matter what. Like what? Well, we've talked about it. Where you know, if it's a Tuesday, I'm having sausage, egg, and chips, no matter where I am. <laughs> That's that's what they're like, right? That's what, they're, that's what they'll remember. Actually, when I'm saying about stuff about live eight and all that, you know, people will remember. If people said to a dad, you know, you remember live eight? Okay, what day was it on? Tuesday. When I had sausage and chips. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing changes. But the thing is, today normally we have a bit of a, you know, I know what we're doing where and all that, and it's all sort of messed up. We don't usually know what we're doing where. We no. say, what should we do next? No, you but, go, what? but I know, like Rockbusters has been done early. Right. So that's that's normally done. Is that really throwing you? I say, uh oh, uh oh, I just uh -oh. don't. I don't like all this change and that. It's messing about, isn't it? Rain man. <laughs> so what what do you want now? Well, what about song with the story? <sighs> See, with the, uh, right. Well, last week. Look at him. He's in a genuinely foul mood. Uh, no, there. he's actually rocking. Yeah, he's actually rocking like Rain Man as well. Last week we did, like you say, Eric Clapton. This is the section where we play a song with a story. I think every song, if it's a good song. It's got a story, you've got to listen from, to it, to, so, you know, from the start, mm. you get in the middle, you're going, oh, how's it going to end and all that. Yeah. You wait another minute, you know the ending, you're happy. But, uh, but, the thing is, as Steve said, um, you know, sometimes you're disappointed with it, so it's just not a good story. And as Steve said, I I'm not sure you're finding what you need in a song for a story. Why don't you read a, bu uh, a book, a novel, if you want a really good story that engrosses you, and why don't you read a book? You're not going to get it from a, a pop song. I have got time for a book. Song's three and a half minutes. And that's it, is it? And that, that satisfied you? Well, yeah, it gets you thinking for a few minutes, then you move on. This then you one, stop thinking. Two <laughs> minutes fifty, this one, right? It's brilliant. Go on, then. It's about, uh, last week we talked about the, the little cripple fella, right? Mm, this one- we, uh, As I say, I don't think we say cripple anymore, but go on. Alright, this one, someone emailed in saying, if you want a song about that, this is a song you want to listen to, right? Right. It's about this fella who, uh, basically something happened, I think he's in a wheelchair, right, mm. for some reason. Uh, you thought that last time. His wife, um, you know, likes going out. She doesn't take him, take him with her when when she goes out. Right. Is um, it weird we don't take you left to town? Yeah. Good, brilliant song. Well, just play it then. Yeah, great song. Mm -hmm. You've painted up your lips and rolled and curled your tinted hair. God's sakes, turn around. What do you mean? Oh, just uh. It's a good story. It starts off well and that. You're feeling yeah. sorry for him, but then he says, where's my gun? Yeah. Cause well, she's a slut. Why? Because she's going off. Yeah, but, but what, what does, what does he expect her to do? What? Just cause it, it, he paralyzes his legs fighting for his country, presumably in Vietnam War, says that crazy Asian war. So he's gone, he's fought for his country, he's taken a bullet, he's come home, he can't walk, he should be a hero, and then he, his wife's going out, putting it about, downtown. Why do I never meet women like Ruby? <laughs> Forever lost, the magic numbers on XFM 104.9. Well, the concert's kicked off, Steve. Yeah, I'm a bit annoyed that we're still here, really. Let's try and wrap this up quite quickly and then show No one's listening anyway. Nah. We could talk about anything. Well, we do. Yeah, true. It makes no difference to We us, could do a lot more swearing than we normally do. <laughs> and do even more. <laughs> I was oh. talking to Carl the other night, um, because I'd been watching, rewatching for some reason, that film Witness with Harrison Ford, oh, where he's a uh, policeman that, um, has to protect a little boy who's part of an Amish community. Amish? Amish. Amish. Yeah. And I tried to explain to Carl- You look plain, John Book. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. 
And, uh, I was obviously trying to explain the Amish to Carl. Uh, he'd never heard of them. Completely stony-faced. Amazing. Used. Um, now for those- Okay, you've explained it to him, have yeah. you? Okay then. <laughs> now I don't know what you said, but I'm assuming you got it right, right? Carl, now tell me, tell me back now, what are the Amish? Um, they're just, just people who, um, sort of live, uh, like in the olden times. So to them they're sort of in about 1842 or something, so they're getting old papers and that. Um, they no, haven't caught up no, to- No, 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 no. They haven't cut, they, they, don't, they don't have telly. They don't they deny, don't, they don't deny that the twentieth century has happened. They just don't want to be part of it. They, they they look up and they see planes and they know what they are and they go into the town and they see it in the window of Dixon's the telly. They just they just don't want to be part of it. No, they're they're still living they still They are still living like it's yeah. Yeah, that's, 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 that's what I mean, yeah. Yeah, but they don't they they know they know about everything else. They just don't want to be part of it because they think that the sort of the uh, uh, revolution um, was a bad thing. They think it, you know that society became more and more depraved, and they wanted to go away from it, and they want to go back to old values, and they think they don't need TV and 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 jets and that way of life. They can they can survive in the old way because the old way was better. Missing out on live eight. <laughs> yeah, 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 but they haven't had band aid yet. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. I think this is the problem that Carl had. He, he in his mind. They were just a bit delayed, so yeah. that in his head they were slowly moving towards the 20th century. They wouldn't be century. able to watch most of these bands, all their electric guitar. They could, they, they'd be allowed to watch Tracy Chapman. Yeah. Doing an acoustic set. Yeah. Between yeah. the bands. Yeah. yeah. That'd be alright. But no, in a... Carl's mind it's like if he- Although they wouldn't like Fast Car. They wouldn't <laughs> like singing about that, they go, I don't know what you're talking about. Pony and Trap. You got a pony and trap. <laughs> That'd be alright. But, but are they still, do they still get sort of- Rubbish post and that saying we need your money for this or you no, know get behind this charity. They live in a isolated community. They live, they're farmers, aren't they? They're farmers. It's so. an agricultural community and they're obviously very staunchly religious. Um, I mean, in actual fact, it would suit you very well because you hate crowds, you hate groups of people, you don't like the modern world. Well, you'd love it down there, wouldn't he you? He wouldn't like getting up at four o'clock to milk a cow, though, would he? Well, no, but he'd get mm. used to it. Go back to bed, couldn't you? It's probably. Out, I mean, have they got anything to do with the? The Hare Krishna people? No. No. Nothing at all. Because out of all, all the religions, that's, you know, I'm not a religious person, I, I don't, I don't understand You're it. You're only saying Hare Krishna because you've got the head. That's the only reason oh, you think I, it'd I'm be- I'm halfway there. Yeah. But, but the thing <laughs> is, out of, out of all, you just, what's, what, what was that? <laughs> well, he just fell out of my pocket where I'm, I'm nearly laying down. <laughs> that's the danger of wearing sweatpants <laughs> everywhere you go. I'm the only ever lying down in a chair. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. I'm, I'm, you know, I've never been a religious type, you know, if people no. want to do it, I'll let them do it and what have you. Good of you. But out of all of them, mm. the, I, I want one that's not gonna take over your life. I don't want one where you've got to get up three times a day and you've got to go and pray and that, you've got to get up early. Forget that. It's yep. getting in the way. But if it's something like, um, I was walking to work the other day, right, across Oxford Street, mm. um, there's a little Harry Krishna fella there, and, uh, he sort of had, uh, he had a leaflet and stuff, and, uh, he said, you know, are you interested? And I said, what do you do? And, uh, he said, well, you know, we're against getting stressed out and what have you. And, um, he gave me a plum. <laughs> they hand out food for some reason. <laughs> but, um, I sort of asked a few <laughs> questions. <laughs> Let us do you yeah. There's two bold people, one yeah. of which is wearing an orange top. Holding a plum in the middle. He hands the other one a, pl pl a plum. It's almost, it's almost like you can imagine some kind of religious painting. <laughs> yeah, <It's> exactly, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but yeah. Uh, you know, what, what is their sort of main thing, cause he didn't really tell me that much. He was a, a Japanese bloke, so I didn't know what, what he was saying that, that much. Why? He well, wasn't um, speaking English? Not, not very well. He wasn't the best sales bloke to send out for them, <laughs> is what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. But what, what's that? Are they, you're saying they're nothing like- Well I believe Hare Krishna is a, is a kind of um, as an offshoot of a sort of Buddhist faith. It is, and, I think um, they are Buddhist, aren't they? Yeah, and obviously the, obviously their most, their, their kind of trademark as it were, is that they have to say, I believe they have to say Hare Krishna, Hare, Hare Krishna in a certain rhythm, in a certain order, a certain amount of times per day. That's why you see them all down the street saying Hare Krishna, Hare, Hare Krishna, because it's actually a, a sort of religious chant which they're obliged to do. So you see, even if you go into the Hare Krishna faith, you may find yourself, you know, in Tesco or whatever, forced to say Hare Krishna, Hare Hare Krishna, perhaps out, why- Out loud, out not loud. just thinking it. Yeah, no, no, out loud. You can put it on an iPod and- You could pop it on an iPod, no, it doesn't count, no, I think you have to actually say it. 
So I guess that kind of eats into your, into your social life a little bit. And then the, and there's, there's the wearing orange as well. Particularly frustrating, I imagine if you're in a, in a cinema or a library. <laughs> a little bit awkward there, you know, midway through, um, or Star Wars you live or next door to a bloke called Harry Krishna, <laughs> yeah. who constantly thinks you're calling him. <laughs> yeah, that, that probably. Yeah. Mm. So that's that's in this. I mean, I don't think we've quite done the the uh, Harry Krishna faith. It's full service there, but uh, so interesting to you. I mean, you, you you got handed a plum. You've been treated well by them. Yeah, well, but he couldn't tell. I, I just wanted to know how much time it would take up. Uh, what are the benefits? Mm. Um, you know, what can you? What can well, I think do? the benefits are they probably don't get stressed out. They've probably got that sort of that that zen, that that that, that chiness about them where they they try and interact and quite meditative. Yeah. Yeah. They've got some nice trainers as well, don't they? With their yeah their orange. What orange. are you looking for then in a faith car? You say you it, it's what are the benefits? I mean, obviously Catholicism, you get the communion wine and um, bread. So yeah, but I can afford that. Right. Um, probably. Uh, just, just, I like the Crusaders. I was forced into joining that as a kid because a mate sort of joined it, and uh, he sort of said, "Are you joining?" Uh, I sort of swore at him. I said, "I'm not doing that." Right? Yeah. He said, "Right, if you don't come with me, I'll, uh, I'll tell your mum that you just swore." <laughs> so I was like, "Oh." So, so I went, <laughs> so I went along, and they used to just go on the Friday when they played, you know, Sabutio and stuff. And then I went on one Sunday, and it was, it was totally different. It was no Sabutio. There was no sort of, you know, uh... Table tennis. Uh, the thing where you hold a, a thing and knock things over. Skittles. Uh, Skittles. There was all that on a Friday. Went on the Sunday, it was rubbish. <laughs> he said, right, sit down in this room. They gave me a Bible. Thought, this looks too heavy, this. This is too big. I'm not interested in this, but... And, uh, I never went again. I used to hide on a Sunday when they came round. And, um, <laughs> that, that's, that's been the only thing. <laughs> I did that. I said, he, why did he say he'd turn out to have to hide on a Sunday <laughs> when they're coming round? Because they wouldn't, they wouldn't leave. They wouldn't leave. Who the, was the it? Were they adults? It was a, yeah, sort of a, well, he seemed like an adult to me at the time, but he was probably about 27. Like well, that, that is an adult. Yeah, but, do you know what I mean? He seemed a lot older when I was a kid. Yeah. And he came knocking and that, and he used to say to me, Mum, I'll just tell him I'm ill or something. And, uh. They used to hang around to see if, I, if I'd eventually come out to play in that. And if I did, I think they would have grabbed me and, and took me there. I love the idea that you want- that for you religion has to pr bring with it some kind of gift. It's like, you know, join our faith and you get an alarm clock radio. It's but, like something but like- I think religion, But I think religion does bring a gift. Usually, it's- Well, the, the gift of the Lord. Well, well, the gift of everlasting life, isn't it? And that's the problem with it, you know. A lot of people believe in it because they think. But the, with, for Carl, oh, right. his, his feeling is like that should be a given. That's safe. I'm definitely going home with eternal life. But yeah. what else can I have? Is so there an iPod? Do you have to have it? a religion? Because uh, obviously I don't have a religion. I don't miss it, and I wouldn't want one. I'm an atheist, and that, that's out of that's out of belief. That's out of logic, and we don't get into the the politics or the mm. the morality of it. Why do you, Why do you feel you need a religion? Why don't you just get a hobby? Well, I, I didn't want one. I don't want one. I just was saying that. You know, if I was to get one, which one would I go for? <laughs> is what I'm saying. Mm. I'd like to see you perhaps as a Jew. I think a, a Jew, Judaism would suit you well, I think. What are the hours like for that? Tough. It can be tricky. That's what I mean. I don't want anything <laughs> that's, you know. And they, they have a day where they don't eat and stuff. I couldn't be doing that. <laughs> so, so they have days when they eat a lot too much? Yeah, but what happens if I'm not that hungry that day? <laughs> like I say, I don't like change. No. I mean, I like my Cheerios in the morning. <laughs> I don't- I don't- <laughs> I still have that other girl in my head by Elvis Costello and Britt Bacharach, uh, on this final XFM show, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Well, we nearly got to wrap it up. I think we got to do the, uh, Rockbusters winner and give someone those lovely prizes, monkey news, then we're out of here. We'll yeah. maybe come back, maybe do some Christmas specials. I don't want to make any promises. <laughs> <laughs> right then, first one. First one was, uh, Richard's kid, uh, he cuts hair for a living. Yeah, what's right. that? That was, uh, well, try and work it out. No, you know? there's no point. <laughs> Dick's son, yeah, he was a barber. Bar, yeah. bar, Barbara Dixon, right? Dixon, work. Dixon. Well, again, Barbara, they, they Di Barbara Dixon. Right, her so name wasn't Barbara Dixon, was it? <laughs> so that's did, that one. did Ronnie Corbett ever say, "Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Barbara Dixon"? <laughs> second no, one, second never one was, did. Uh, <laughs> he never did. I have a problem saying the French word for well. What's what's the French word for well? Bye, isn't it? That's good. What? 
No, that's, that's good then. Well, well, no, what? Isn't it, uh, isn't it BN? Yeah. Yeah, all yeah. right. I have a problem saying it, so I, ca I can't say it. I can't say BN. I can't say, can't say BN. Can't say Kasabian. Right? So, <laughs> they managed to work that one out. Can't, can't That's say- That's one of your words, that. Can't, can't say BN. Can't what, say BN. Can't say BN is not- it's not- it's not- it's and the last Doesn't one. Work. That's terrible! Eight kebabs, two kebabs, plus fifty-seven kebabs, times twenty-seven kebabs. This fella is struggling working it out. What's- what's the answer there? DS. Right? I don't know some. Uh, right? So he's, he's struggling working it out. He's, uh, it's a Donna Sum. Donna Sum, um, right? <laughs> so they got that right as well, so. What, what, what was the answer? Donna Summer. Donna Summer. Yeah, Donna Summer. Donna Summer. Donna Summer. So, uh, just pick. Just so pick one, Steve. Then. Steve, just pick one. We went no, out on a high. high. That was shocking. What about, uh, let's have a look. Is, uh. Well, it's the first one to get all three. Steve, what's the first one with all three? Well, there's so many here. Yeah, I mean. but this is the first one that came through in time wise. Um, Probably that one, no. No, I don't like Rob because he's been slagging us off. In fact, no, let's give it to Rob. Yeah, he's the, the first. If he's the first. No, to be honest with you, Rob's been slagging us off, but at least he knows. I mean, at least he's got some taste. Yeah. You know? Yeah, well, right, if he was the so, first, then Rob's the winner. It, well, yeah, well, give Rob, he gets a uh, ladder 49 and a bunch of other DVDs. But that means he goes straight no, into the hat. Put him in the there, no, I'm just going to write his name now. I'm going to throw that straight in the, uh, in the hat. I can imagine that no one, even the people, who've entered are that excited. Not because the prizes aren't great, but I'm worried that they don't appreciate it, Rick. Do you know, I get the feeling that our listeners, they just don't appreciate the fact that we've gone to all this trouble, we've got the Homer Simpson drawing and things like that. I just feel like these people don't deserve it. <laughs> and do you know what it's weird? I just wish we had a better quality of listener. Yeah. Like, people who listen to Radio 2, they deserve it. You know, they're elderly and infirm, some of them. They, they could really, it would really cheer them up. But mm. our lot, you know, drug addicts. Yeah, let me pick you know, out. Tr truck drivers. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna- I've just put all the names in the hat, all the previous winners from the previous weeks and- Who's put out? Is this Pilkey, um, gonna put it out? Do you want Pilkey or do you want Ricky? Uh, oh well, let's- let's have the straight monkey do it. Alright. Plunge your hand in there. Is it just- that's one, isn't that's it? That's it, just pull, yeah. Yeah, pull that one out, check who it is. Right, it's, uh, Gavin Thompson in Edinburgh. Well done, Gav. Are we gonna get them up there? <laughs> <laughs> you gotta post them, you gotta pay them. They're amazing prizes. Yeah, but the spinal tap one, it's about five foot, isn't it? Well, they can post it, it'll cost them a few quid. It's a radio station. I think you should have to come and collect it. <laughs> no, just cause then it'll at least oh, put, it'll, it'll prove Where's that he's from? Edinburgh. Give it to Bob Galdoff. I'll give it to Bob Galdoff. <laughs> he's walking up there, so he's it, it can <laughs> jog <laughs> Chewing brakes. Fishing for a dream. That's what we're fishing for, isn't it? We're fishing for a dream today. What's that mean? Poverty, I don't know. I don't know what I was talking about. I was, I don't know. I don't it doesn't know. matter what you're saying, Rick. No um, one's listening. No one's listening. Well, we've got to finish anyway. To, I mean, to think about the fact that we, I mean, think how small our percentage of listeners is anyway. Anyway. And then you two are on stage yeah. at the moment. This is like broadcasting during Christmas dinner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just the same. It's just On pointless. hospital radio. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Where everyone's got an iPod for Christmas. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> On the ward. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, we've, we've just got, we're gonna go through, we're gonna go through now till half past and I've got to rush off, I'm afraid, um, to, to live eight. Um. Don't, don't apologise, mate. <laughs> when people see the glam that you're bringing to that event. <laughs> they don't even care about the people introducing it. Comedians going there going, ladies and gentlemen, just get on with it. No, I agree. No, I've got a good joint there. Two blokes will get on with it. Bring on Madonna. Um, but we're gonna give it to him. Carl, we're gonna t go through to the end. We've done everything we have to do. Monkey news. The final monkey news of the year, possibly. It's been a joy. I'd just like to say, you know, I'm half of myself, Steve Merchant, and this little bald mank. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, speak for yourself. <laughs> yeah. Go on. Uh, we should just point out as well, if you, if you miss, uh, Rockbusters while we're away. <laughs> Yeah, right. Uh, you can log on to xfm.co.uk forward slash rockbusters where you can actually see Carl himself, um, playing, uh, introducing you to an interactive game of rockbusters. Looks very much like blockbusters. It does, surprisingly. But yeah, you can, you can join into that. Uh, and there's part. also, uh, talking of monkey news, there's, uh, there's a link on, um, on the website, I'm trying to think where you go. I think if you go on my little biography bit, someone's done some animation to some old monkey news. Oh, it's brilliant. It's great. Right. Yeah. So if you if you if you have withdrawal symptoms of monkey news, then you can find some classic and it's monkey animated. news. It's classic monkey news. I feel drained today. Do you? Go on. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is the strangest radio show in the world. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. Because the, well, we can do that. We can talk about this thing. Oh, I feel drained today. Just like he's not. 
Like, no one's listening. Because that's the sort of thing you say socially and no one listens. Like, just when you're washing up, oh, I feel drained today. It's rhetorical. Yeah. You're not expecting anyone, not even your loved ones, to go, oh, really? They just go, oh, uh, that. But to do it live on air. Yeah. Oh, no on. one's listening. Got what I mean. It's just give us a jingle. But the- but the- <laughs> Exactly. But the truth the is- The contempt we have for our poor listeners is unbelievable. But the truth is, the listeners aren't listening and yes. we don't want to be here. <laughs> so, this really is one of the most pointless things oh. ever. No, I would've, I would've been quite happy to do a full show. But you know what? The flow of it's just- I mess. would love to listen to this back in ten years. <laughs> this actual show, let's keep this forever. Let's keep this show forever. The, the show we went early, we were bored, it was a day we are trying to save Africa, but we are a little bit annoyed that no one's listening. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> Right, once and for all, the final monkey news but of the not, year. Oh, go on. What? Yeah. What were you gonna say? No, I was just gonna say, if you're not into the Live 8 and you're gay, you're not listening. <laughs> because you're on a walk. <laughs> right, okay. Right. Oh, chimpanzee that! Monkey news! Right, there's this, uh, card game going on. Right. <laughs> In uh, in the uh, a, a, a big hotel in uh, in Vegas, right. right? The Lux Luxor Hotel in Vegas. Yeah. Uh, there's a major car game. All the all the big players and that sure. were uh, were involved. Mm. Right? They're all invited. Mm. Anyway, so they all uh, they all meet up in this dark room at the back of the. Oh, <laughs> there we go, dark room. Dark room. But hairy fella. So it, was, uh, it was brilliant at poker. I yeah. say it's a it's a big game and that everyone's been waiting for it. So it's played in the back room, not not in the main entrance bit, right? <laughs> so anyway, like I say, it's dark in there and what have you, and, and the players went in. There was already someone sat in there, right? Right. But uh, they couldn't, couldn't, couldn't <laughs> quite see. Was he a short, hairy bloke with slightly longer <laughs> arms than legs? <laughs> couldn't see. Him where, is, it, where, where his arms slightly longer than his legs? Couldn't see him being dark. Was he had holding his hand of cards with his feet? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so, oh, so the cards were dealt, right? Cards yeah. were dealt. Game's going on. <laughs> his cards with his feet. <laughs> Game, game went on for hours, right? No, 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 this, we, no, the th terrible thing is that not even we're listening to I Carl know, now. I know. No, no one, literally, no one is listening it's so to Carl. Insulting. There's a lot of smoking going on. It's right? going on. A lot of eating, a lot of eating and nuts going on. <laughs> that was a bit weird because they don't normally get through as many, but for, for this night. <laughs> so, I'm. Um, <laughs> come on, let's just play Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. See you maybe Christmas time. Goodbye. Yeah, right?